Sometimes we violate trust. It happens all the time. How do you rebuild a relationship after trust is broken? That's today at Live On Purpose TV. Trust. It's one of those issues that once it's lost, it's kind of hard to regain it in a relationship. And really, it's one of the most um, troubling or damaging things that can happen in a relationship if trust is violated. There's a book that I read several years ago that gave us some insight into what's going on with this by Bishop Desmond Tutu. It's called the book of forgiving. He's got a fourfold process in here that he walks us through related to forgiveness. But one of the quotes that the Bishop Tutu mentioned in, the, in his book is that we are all broken. And from that brokenness, we hurt each other. And then he sets up forgiveness as the healing path that we can take to mend the brokenness that occurs or the hurt that occurs because of our brokenness. Is this true? I, in my life, I think it is. I constantly do things that hurt the people that I love. I think it's part of being human. And as we, as we do these things, sometimes trust is affected. Think of trust for a moment as a bank account. You know, if you've got a bank account and you make deposits into that bank account and it grows up gradually over time until you've got this nice balance. And then what happens if you go in and you make a huge withdrawal from that bank account? Well, now you don't have the same balance that you had before. And if you really want to purchase something that requires a higher balance, you're going to have to again make some deposits into that bank account. Trust is very similar in a lot of ways. We make little deposits. I think the best way to build trust is to do what we say we will do, to have integrity. In my mind, integrity is when what you say and what happens match. Think about that. When what you say and what actually happens are a perfect match, that's integrity. And the more you can make those deposits of integrity by doing what you say and saying what you'll do, that helps to build up the trust. Now let's talk for a minute about what happens if you're on the being hurt end of things. Okay, someone has done something that has violated your trust or hurt you in some way because of their brokenness. Okay, that's where we're going next. Anytime we are offended, we create a story. Now notice that this is true. The story, and some stories are true. I'm not saying that it's not. I'm saying that anytime we get hurt or offended, we create a story. I think part of the process of letting it go or healing or rebuilding after trust is broken is to tell the story. Tell the story. Where do you have a confidant or someone that you can share what has happened? You know, I did uh, treatment for several years with people who had post-traumatic stress disorder. When a traumatic event happens, an important part of healing is being able to tell that story, to actually just share what happened. It helps our mind somehow to, to wrap itself around what has occurred so that we can start a healing process. Now. There's a caution here because sometimes in telling the story, we choose to attach ourselves to a story that doesn't serve us well. Can I give you an example? One of my clients, this was probably about 25 years ago, early in my career, I had a client who came to see me about something very, very difficult that had happened in her life. And the quick version without sharing anything that's confidential, her now ex-husband had accused her of committing a crime for which she was arrested while he absconded with her daughter, took off, left the state. So the, that created a child custody issue. Anyway, that was the basics of what had happened. I got to meet with her for several sessions over the course of many months. At one point in this process, I had observed that she had attached herself to a story about this that was not serving her well. 
Yes, she was telling the story about how her ex-husband had taken off with her daughter and had her arrested so that she couldn't chase him. That's all kind of the factual part of this story. But what this had evolved into for her was a victim story. And by that I mean this story starred him. And she showed up in a supporting role as the pitiful victim that was getting beat up in the process. You know what I'm talking about here with the victim story? I called this to her attention by saying, hey, um, have you noticed in all of the sessions that we've been having over the past several weeks and even a couple of months, have you noticed who the story is about? Oh, she gets this look on her face like, oh my gosh, it's him, isn't it? I said, yeah, who's paying for these sessions? Different answer. <laughs> it wasn't him. She was paying for it, and yet he got to be the focus of every session. This didn't sit well with her. We talked about how this is kind of like if, if the story of your life, just think about your story for a minute, is a stage production, and we're pulling up to the theater, okay? You're in the limo, and the butler opens the door for you. You get out, and you walk down the red carpet, right, to the premiere of your story, and we look up at the marquee, and it says, your story starring all those dirty, nasty, terrible people who broke your trust. Wait a minute, that doesn't feel right. And that image helped her as well as she realized, you know what? I'm letting him be the star of this, this story. Okay, so yes, you have to tell your story, but the caution is let's not get sucked into a victim story where we're the pitiful victim and that other person is the one who is the star of the show. We don't want to go there. So in selecting your story, realize that you can rewrite this thing as a hero story. A hero story. What's the difference? In the hero story, you show up as the amazing, powerful hero. And yes, there's other supporting actors, including the one who broke your trust, but they're just there as a supporting actor. And their role is to illuminate your genius. You think about any of the movies that you've seen, you know, those hero movies? Why are the villains in those movies? Well, the villains are simply there to illuminate the hero. So we're going to be selective in which story we select and attach ourselves to as we start to move on and rebuild this relationship of trust. Going back to Desmond Tutu's book, I think he had a brilliant suggestion that once the hurt occurs and we've decided that we're going to move on, we have a choice to make. And the choice that he suggests is that we are either going to release or renew the relationship. I had a great opportunity several years ago to interview coach Larry Gelwick. She, you might remember him from the movie Forever Strong about the Highland rugby team. He was the coach of that team. Coach Gelwick did an interview with me. You can link to that right down here in the description. And during that interview, he told a story about one of his rugby players who had been bitten by a snake. Well, as he went to visit this, his young man's name was Mike, as he went to visit Mike in the hospital, he was asking him, now Mike, this was a, you were out in your garage and you were playing and you found a snake. Am I clear on this? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You knew what it was. Yeah. You picked it up. Yeah. And then you ran around with this snake trying to scare the girls. Yeah, the snake bit you. Yeah. See, he's affirmatively answering all of these questions. The coach was, was just, his mind was blown. Okay, so you knew what it was when you picked it up. Going back to Bishop Tutu's book, as he says, you got a choice to either release or renew the relationship. What if? Now, I'm not saying that the person who hurt you is a snake, but what if they are? You know what I mean? This is just someone who's not healthy for you to have in your life. Can you release that without holding a grievance in your own heart about that? I think that's one of the options. Well, what if we choose to renew the relationship? Okay, there are principles that will allow us to do that. And we've talked about that in some of the other videos. When you decide which direction you're going to go, either way, you get to move forward 
with forgiveness in your own heart. Because going back to the snake, for example, if a snake bites you, what are you gonna do? Try to chase it down, find a rock, and smash it? Or let the snake go. Make haste to get the venom out of your system. That's even more important. So no matter which choice we take here, we can choose forgiveness, which allows us to get the venom out of our own system. Once that trust is broken, it can be hard to rebuild, but it is possible. Hopefully you got some good ideas about that today. I Live On Purpose TV. We'll see you tomorrow.